for people looking ahead to their first bodybuilding show, the first question I always get asked is, what happens on show day? What's actually going to happen as the day goes on? Where do I need to be? What do I need to do? But this is simpler than you might think. So let me help you out. So this is fresh on my mind today because I went to the OCB Tennessee Natural this weekend here in town in Knoxville. Saw my clients, Nick and Sarah there. Congrats to both of them. They both did awesome. Really happy with how things turned out for them. And uh, because it's an OCB show, most of the shows that I usually go to are NPC shows and just reminds me like how different the format can be from one show to the next. It's a really good um, reminder for me as I'm dispensing advice that the most important thing you need to do is just pay attention and be ready for anything. First up, where do you need to go? Where do you need to be? When? The show is going to be at a venue. When you get to that venue, there will be signs that point you in the right direction. If you don't see any signs, just follow the orange people. If you just follow the orange people, they're always going to go in the general direction of where you need to be. So you're gonna have appointments, you're gonna have things to consider. The website for the show, the details for this are gonna be on their website as far as when is check-in when is your tanning appointment? Like when you make that tanning appointment through the provider, they're gonna give you a time. Um, for the show that I did in June, they did not specify a location, so it's just assumed to be at the show venue. For this OCB show, it was at a theater on the University of Tennessee campus. The host hotel was some Marriott hotel in downtown Knoxville. That's where they had all the polygraph testing done. And I think it's also where the actual check-in was for the show, it was at the host hotel. So read things carefully so that you know where to be and when. And if it's unclear, email the promoter or ask your coach who may have an in for some additional information there. It goes without saying also, don't be late. Whatever you do, don't be late. You'd be better off being three hours early than five minutes late because you never know what's gonna happen. It's also worth knowing most shows will have a mandatory competitors meeting. This show did not, which I am thankful for because the meetings are always stupid and a waste of time. Nonetheless, if there is one, go there and go to it. Typically, all of the information that gets disseminated in the meeting could very easily be done in an email, and I see that happening more and more now, but sadly, not exclusively. So there are still lots of pre-show meetings that still happen, and it's really just a giant waste of everyone's time. Um, for this show, this last weekend, they did not have a meeting, great. For my show last month, they had a meeting. I would have loved to have not gone to it, but I had to be at the venue hours before the meeting anyway for my tan touch-up. So I was like, okay, like I had to be there at 5.30 for my final coat of tan. And then the meeting was at eight, had nowhere to go, might as well, and then pre-judging started at nine. The other big thing to know is what is the format of the show? This show on Saturday, the OCB Tennessee Natural was a running format, meaning they did all the men at 10, all the men could then go home and the women started at one. And so when the men come on at 10, they do pre-judging, they do all the judging stuff, short break, and then they come out and do individual presentations and then award presentations. Usually at most shows, you'll have a pre-judging and finals format where judging happens in the morning, usually an eight, nine or 10 a.m. start. And then you'll go until everybody is done. They do men and women just in whatever order. Um, usually it's men's bodybuilding first, women's bikini last, usually, not always. And then you break for however many hours and come back at four, five, or six, or even seven in the evening for finals, which is when you do all the individual presentations, posing routines, etc., and then award presentation as well. Once you're backstage, pretty much every show is gonna have the order of events and the expediter's sheet taped up on the wall somewhere. The expediter sheet is gonna have the order of every class that goes up and also which competitors are in each class. Look for the expediter list backstage, watch it, closely. The first thing that I would tell you to do is to just pay attention. If you're not paying attention, you, I can't be held responsible for what happens or doesn't happen on stage. You've got to know where you need to be and advocate for yourself if necessary. Typically, the expediters are pretty on it and they are going to be calling out names, calling out numbers. So you will be identified by a number, much like in prison. And so you need to respond to that number. Is that how they do it in prison? I don't know. Be ready for anything. Be ready for them to change the order of events on you spontaneously. Be ready for entire categories to get skipped because nobody signed up for that category. At this show, they had the order of events. It was supposed to be for women. It was figure, wellness, women's physique, bodybuilding, bikini. 
Well, they didn't have any physique or, or bodybuilding competitors for the women. So they went from figure to wellness straight into bikini. So if you're thinking like, oh, I got a few classes before I go up. Yeah, maybe not. And the expediter list will probably have those classes listed and they'll be empty, which means you're just going to blaze through those. Keep in mind on the expediters list, if there is a class that has 10, 12, 14 people, they're going to be on stage a long time. That's going to be longer than a class that has one or two people in it where the judges will just put them through their mandatories and get them off stage because it's really easy to make a pretty quick decision on that. Sometimes they will combine classes. If they have like a class A and a class B and there's like one competitor in one of those and two in another one, they'll just bring all three of them on stage together more than likely. So you can find things getting sped up a little bit that way. Also, the judges and the head judge in particular, whatever kind of mood they're in or whatever, whatever their tendency is, is going to dictate the pacing of the show. And so as you're backstage, just pay attention to what's going on on stage and get a feel for how long are they letting people sit in each pose. Are they blazing through them really quick? People might come back and be like, wow, we were just, they just put us through the paces really fast. And other times you might see people like, God, has that same class been out there for 12 minutes? Holy crap. There was one class at this show where I think the same group of people were on stage for about 10 minutes. Sometimes the show can move really quickly or move very slowly entirely at the discretion of the head judge. And it's good to know which. Clearly, if you're in one of the first classes going up, you are the guinea pig. You don't know how quickly things are gonna move. And that's just the nature of the beast. Sometimes you can know and sometimes you can't. Now, when you're on stage, this is the thing that's really confusing for a lot of people. Just be prepared to do whatever the judges tell you to do. And keep in mind, they're gonna be calling you out by number, not by name. So you need to be attuned to that and pay attention for when your number is called. You will come out in a group and how large your group is is going to influence a lot of factors from how much time you spend on stage if they do call outs or not. Call outs would be where your entire group of let's say 15 is brought out on stage, they break you in half, they fold you back into the wings and then they will do a first call out of four, five or six names. That's usually your top four, five or six competitors for that group. That only happens in larger classes. Otherwise, they'll just put you on stage, they'll start putting you through the paces and then eventually they're gonna call out some numbers and they're gonna ask you to change places with other people on stage. This happens a lot. Now, there is a misconception with this, and it's a misconception that is rooted in a lot of actual fact also, so it's worth knowing that it's not entirely unfounded. But typically, as they move people around on stage, the closer you are to the middle, the better your placing is going to be. Keep in mind, at prejudging, they are scoring things, they are making decisions, they are determining the final outcomes, but they are not telling anybody what it is. Nothing is getting announced or anything like that at prejudging. Typically, the closer you get to the middle, the better your outcome is going to be. However, one of my clients, she was moved towards the middle and then she was moved again to the outside after that. And this is simply because sometimes they want to look at people in different positions on stage because the lighting can hit different. Sometimes if somebody is, you know, favoring the left side of the stage, they might want to move them to the right so that the judges on that side of the judging panel get a better and closer look. And oftentimes it's just about who you're standing next to. And sometimes it's not about you at all. Sometimes it's like, yeah, we like you for first, but step off to the side. We want to bring someone else into the middle just so we can get a good look at them because we can't tell if they're supposed to be second, third, or fourth. So oftentimes it has nothing to do with you at all. Um, but just keep in mind, like positions will move and being in the middle does not guarantee you're going to win. And so whenever somebody gets moved to the middle, the audience goes nuts because, you know, whoever is supporting that person figures that they're going to do well. And oftentimes they do. That is often the case, but it's not universally the case. So don't make that assumption. The main thing, the main thing I would tell you is to always expect it to be different. Don't assume that it's always going to go according to how it's written and pay attention Keep your ears open. Don't have headphones in at all backstage. Always be listening, ear to the ground, know what's going on, and be aware of your surroundings and what's happening at any point in the show at all points throughout the day.